Have you ever wanted to add audio to your projects? And I'm not talking about those little buzzers that you can play theme songs on. But actual recordings with words, sentences, or music. Like this. Well, it's actually pretty easy to set up a simple board that can store and play an audio file without the use of complicated sound chips or advanced microcontrollers. As you probably know, when it comes to electronics, sine waves are represented as analog waves. To store them in memory, such as RAM or ROM, we need to convert these waves into a series of digital values. The way a computer does this is by sampling the wave at very short time intervals and saving each voltage value at that point as an 8-bit, 10-bit, 12, or 16-bit value in binary. For example, if we're using an 8-bit analog to digital converter on 5 volts, this portion of the audio wave, which is 3.6 volts, would be represented as 184 in binary. And this portion of the audio wave, which is 0.8 volts, would be represented as 41 in binary. So each voltage level corresponds to a number. The resulting array of binary numbers can be stored in digital memory and roughly represent the original analog wave. If you want to learn more about digital to analog conversion, check out some of the videos in the description below. But we don't need to go into it in this video because audio files on the internet, like songs or recordings on your own computer, are already in this digital form. We will be making a circuit that can store such files and output them as analog waves to a speaker. First, we need an EEPROM to store the audio file. The larger the memory, the longer the audio that can be stored. Next, we need a digital to analog converter, which will take as input the array of bytes in the EEPROM and output the corresponding voltage for each of them. For example, if we give it 184 in 8-bit binary, the chip will output 3.6 volts. If we feed it the array at the right speed, the DAC will produce the original analog wave. Both of these chips use the SPI communication protocol. Of course, in order to control the transfer between the EEPROM and the DAC, we need a microcontroller. The MCU will wait for an input, such as a button press or a signal from a motion detector, after which it will initiate the transfer. All it needs to do is send the right instructions through the SPI and then pulse the clock line fast enough so that the final sound wave is at the right speed. A very simple microcontroller like the PIC12 F683 is perfect for this job. Lastly, we need an audio amplifier so that the final analog wave is strong enough to pass through a speaker. The most common audio amp is the LM386. Now, just how much audio can we store with this setup? It depends on the size of the EEPROM you pick as well as the quality of the audio you want. I picked out the 25A512 EEPROM, which is 64 kilobytes of EEPROM memory. Also, the audio file I'm using has a sampling rate of 8 kilobytes per second. That means that for every second of audio, there are 8,000 bytes in the array, which represent that portion of the wave. As you may have guessed, the higher sampling rate corresponds with better quality audio, because if you sample the wave many times in short time intervals, you can represent the analog wave much better, whereas the lower sampling rate will result in a poor representation of the wave. 8 kilobytes per second is very low. In fact, low standard for quality audio is 44.1 kilobytes per second. But even at 8 kilobytes per second, the EEPROM MathPick can only store 8 seconds worth of audio. So if you're planning on storing entire songs using a high sampling rate, you'll need megabytes of ROM. An important thing to keep in mind is the timing. When the EEPROM is at the last address and there's another clock pulse, it'll jump back onto the first address. This will cause the audio to keep looping, which is usually not what you want. So you want to time the length of the audio and stop the clock pulse at the right address. Also, if you have multiple files in one EEPROM, you want to record the start and end of each section so that the microcontroller only plays the right portion of the audio given a certain input. Finally, an important note on the audio file format. Most files you find online or record on your own will likely be in the MP3 or WAV formats. Whenever you're working with electronics, for example, uploading a file to an EEPROM, you want to make sure that the audio file you use is in the raw format. Raw format is the actual series of digital values that represent the analog wave of the audio file, the binary array as I've been calling it. Whereas other formats like MP3 encode the file in a certain way that requires complicated deciphering. Using an online converter or an audio editing software such as Audacity, you can convert many different audio formats into RAW. This video has mainly been a conceptual explanation of one easy design for a soundboard. If you want to actually make this circuit on a breadboard or a PCB, check out the schematics and code below. 
That's all. I hope you were able to learn something. If anything was unclear or if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments.